Fennick. Don't, th don't think they were quite sure of what they were doing there, South, but Paul Roberts ran into the hole. Just inside South's territory. Blake. That long pass out wide. He's managed to find Maven. And good St George defence just inside Saints territory. Last tackle against South. You can hear the, the South Sydney players saying chase. Oh, they've mucked that up badly, St George. No one called for it and Souths have got six to go. Coleman, he quickly got it away to Roberts. They're thin out there, St George, and they can move it quickly, Souths. 18 metres out from St George's line. Blake, Coleman, Boyle can't get his pass away. 12 metres out from the St George line. De Jura, Roberts, quickly it comes from Fennick. Away it goes to Ellison. And now comes to Blake and Blake will score. Chisholm was in the movement as well as Phil Blake scores the try and Souths are leading 6-0. Beautiful piece of football from South to capitalise after they got six more tackles when Saints messed up the kick. Roberts picks up Fennick, good quick hands, Chisholm chiming in to make the extra man and that opened up the gap for uh, Phil Blake and he had the pace to get through. Get through. But uh, just crisp, beautiful hands, Saints were stretched and South, plenty of men there coming onto the ball. Uh, Phil Blake to try score it. And here it is again, that's Chisholm who got the last pass away and it's Blake. Backing up, it registers the four-pointer. 14 tries from 20 games last year for Souths. Already has scored three this year. Bronco De Jura taking over the goal kicking. Mark Ellison was injured during that passage of play. De Jura comes in, and he's got it, two points. And so South Sydney have quickly got a good lead here at the football stadium. Just under 10 minutes gone, and Souths lead eight points to nil. And really, John, this was just a matter of uh, South Sydney having too many numbers. Yes, excellent good hands. A good pass by Roberts. He committed two, and then good hands, good support play. And, of course, Phil Blake with a bit of speed to finish it off. And Mike Landrews, I believe, has come on. He's wearing Guernsey number 40. And he's replaced Mark Ellison, who's just left the field. Harrington comes in, he's solid fellow for a winger, Ross Harrington. South could well have scored that try a tackle earlier because Mark Ellison went down as a replacement, Roberts, but uh, Michael Andrews, I should say. But uh, Mark Ellison was trying to uh, get to his feet to play the ball, but he was injured, and that really did slow the momentum of South down because they had Saints gone for all money on the right-hand side of the field, but uh, two tackles later, they managed to bring it back and scored the try they were after. When you consider that they've already uh, had one try lost by Harrington dropping the ball. Here's Ricky Walford coming back. They've been all over Saints like a rash South Sydney in the first ten minutes. St George brought themselves undone then when no one called for the kick that went through. Mucked it up, gave away six tackles. And that was good play from South. St George, very bunched, but take it up through Osborne. The name. It's the first time he's kicked, isn't it? It's a good kick too. De Jura. Perhaps and George have hardly had the ball. What they've had, they've squandered. South Sydney. <laughs> Bring the ball back to the halfway line. Just inside St George's territory. Fennec's making some good ground away from dummy half. Here's Michael Andrews. Nine metres St George's side of halfway. Penalty against St George, up inside the five. <coughs> Ellison uh, on the sideline. He's about to go back on. St George are putting themselves under pressure with these mistakes. Here's the referee, back a good ten metres, and one, two, three, four in front of him. <coughs> uh, Bronco de Jura it is, who's going to have the shot at goal. And he's much the same position where Ellison had the first penalty shot of the afternoon, which was successful. Ellison's been sent back to sit on the bench. He's allowed 10 minutes in the head bin. Well, not only allowed, as I understand it, he's got to spend 10 minutes in the sin bin. 
kicked 13 goals from eight in 18 games last year. Bronco de Jura. Souths obviously would have liked him to be back out there to take this kick as well. You'd see the referee standing back 10 metres there. The, the rule says five metres, but the point is the players can take their line from the referee. That's all they have to do. De Jura to try and make it 10 nil. That kicks a wobbly old one, but it might just get there. It does. Two points. Just managed to creep over the bar. Bronco de Jura, two from two, and Souths are leading St George after 13 minutes, 10 nil. Souths have won the scrum, de Jura. 11 metres out from South's quarter line. Blake looking for that hole down the centre again. Ian Roberts. Good defence from St George. Penalty against St George. Is the referee saying that the marker wasn't standing directly in front of the tackle player. I was also watching St George creeping up in front of the referee back on the five metre line. These two teams figured in some great battles. Probably the most memorable, the 65 grand final played next door. In front of the record crowd of 78,056 that day. George won that 12 8. Today, though, it's Souths who are performing and doing it well at the moment. They lead 10 0. Chisholm on the quarter line. Saints end of the field. Paul Roberts takes the ball ahead. He's only about 14 or 15 metres out. On the run around, Coleman got it back. A beautiful ball to Lyons. This will be a try. In he goes. Lovely bit of football from South Sydney. Coleman through the pass and Lyons running on the angle into the gap. Scores the try and it's 14-0. Well, South set this up beautifully. They took three plays towards the middle, moving towards the right, then hit back to the left. Coleman knew what he was looking for and it was Graham Lyons coming from deep and hard onto the ball and just sizing right through. They'd taken it right across to that side, they set it up. It wasn't obvious, Lyons came from very deep on the burst and just went through half a hole and all the way from that point. But it was a planned move, they set it up for four tackles and executed it well. Notice here, you can't see Lyons anywhere in the play there, but he comes from deep, out of the picture and right on the burst. And he's very quick and very elusive. His fifth try of the year, Graham Lyons, and he's pretty happy about it too. In fact, he was graded as a halfback originally. A very talented young footballer. Mark Ellison, again, taking over the goal-kicking duties after he spent a bit of time in the head bin. This is the hardest kick that Souths have had all afternoon. He struck it pretty well. That's as straight as a die over the black dot. And South Sydney leads 16-0. De Jura from dummy half. Ellison. Fennick on the quarter line. Ian Roberts. That's good defence from St George. Tackle number five. Kick will be on. Ellison it is. Behind Moore. That's a good kick from Ellison. Potter's back there as well. Oh, what a horror pass from Mick Potter, honestly. St George are crucifying themselves out here at the moment. They've had to do almost a uh, third more tackling or 50% more tackling than St George because they're just throwing the ball away at every opportunity they can. Nick Potter should know far you know, much better than that to uh, throw a hospital pass to Clint Moore there. It could have easily come loose and South would have been in for another try. And Hugerworth's lost the ball there. South have come up with it. Well, you look at the tackle counts, and Georgia made 96 tackles, and South uh, made 69. And here it is. You watch Hugerworth just loses the ball in the tackle. There it is. Well, St. George, before the game, were talking very much about ball security being the key to today's game. I might have been talking about it, but nobody's listened. Well, coaches are always talking about it. Uh, it depends how you actually get the message to the players. And here's Lyons again. Quickly, it's come away to Harrington.
Harrington, Harrington for the corner. Harrington, will he get there? Yes, try to South Sydney. It's 20 nil. Good strong football by South. When you look at the highlights of the game, you'll talk about the uh, the tries that were scored, but it's a mistake from St Georgia that are just causing this to happen. But good football. Lyon really had to swivel around and throw that long, flat pass to Harrington. Potter came at him, but really had no chance of stopping him in that position. Harrington's such a big, strong man. But good, long passes to get the ball wide. Firstly from Blake. Great pass from uh, Lyon. That's a very difficult pass to throw to suddenly turn and stop and hook it back at 90 degrees, but he did it. Tremendous performance, and so Ross Harrington makes up for the error early in the game when he got into the end goal area and lost the ball. Scores his first try of the year. The internet is a strange place. Who knows what we'll be watching next? Cat videos? Court dramas? Court dramas with cats in them? How does your client plead? But no matter how strange things get, Foxtel Broadband has your back. Plus, it's reliable, so you know you're in a safe pair of hands. Unlike this guy. Foxtel Broadband. Fast, affordable, reliable broadband for whatever we're watching next. Love the thrill of the chase during the Aussie Open? Well, why not make it a multi with Sportsbet? We're serving up more markets, more offers and bigger odds. Make it a multi with Sportsbet. Gamble responsibly. He did. Cool. Hilux, an unbreakable connection. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Hair loss? Consult Advanced Hair Studios Clinic and regain a full head of hair, as did cricket legends Jacques Callis and Sarav Ganguly and tennis legend Thad Cash. I love my hair then, still do. And that's why I'm seeing Advanced Hair Clinic. Their amazingly effective treatments have stopped my hair loss and regenerated hair where I was losing it. Advanced Hair Clinic. They're the world champions in hair restoration. Call Advanced Hair Studio now. If you want to bowl faster tomorrow, you need sports nutrition you can trust today. INT Sports Nutrition is banned substance tested and informed sports certified. INT Sports Nutrition, powering tomorrow, today. So you do like it? Okay. I love it, yeah. yeah. Now when you go pre-owned, you can enjoy the same feeling you get with a new Toyota. Tested and backed by Toyota. Upgrade your car, mate. This? Yeah, no big deal. Toyota certified. Pre-owned in a class of its own. Oh, what a feeling. Toyota. Mr. Cage, what's your favorite movie? That's one of those questions that's impossible to answer. That thing is stalking us. Fuck him out. What does he want? Me. Get what you really want and bring the cinema experience home. I'm Nick. Wow! Whoa, wow, Cage! Foxtel Movies. Watch on demand. Ellison, can he make it three from three? He's missed it. South Sydney leads St George 20 nil with two and a half minutes left in the first half. And there's the error count. Uh, look at the missed tackles against St George. South really starting to show up in that area. Not so much in the handling area, though it does appear that South uh, Saints have dropped the ball early in the tackle count a lot more. Andrews to play it just outside the St George quarter line. Chisholm, Ian Roberts. Almost at the quarter line. No ground his legs. Fennick a dummy half. Fennick on his own. That's Coleman. Away it comes towards Boyle. The flick pass out the back. Andrews. Saints aren't hitting hard enough in the tackle. Souths are standing, delivering. Coleman. The cross field that comes. Here's Chisholm. And Chisholm's only nine metres away. Good run. Blake on his own. Blake trying to squeeze over. 
Last tackle against South Sydney. Boyle's in a dummy half. Coleman's out for the right. That's where the ball will go, or will it? No, Boyle puts the kick in. Rebounds off Bailey's legs, and then he dives on it to secure possession for St George. Walford. Ricky Walford has only touched the ball about two or three times in the game. So still the half-time score at 20 nil as Fullerton Smith's up over the quarter line. That comes away to Fafita and it was Ford. There was no way the pass could be anything else but Ford. St George just don't seem to be able to do anything right. Uh, Fafita clearly offside by half a metre. But again, early in the tackle count. St George conceding and they've lost that. This will be a penalty. Fullerton Smith breaking too quickly from the scrum. He was out before the ball had come clear. So South Sydney really applying the pressure now. Second kick to be taken by Longbottom. Just 14 metres away from St George's line. Longbottom, he's got within five metres. Coleman. Coleman finds a runner. This is Chisholm again. Just out from the St George line. South Sydney leading 20 nil. Coleman's the dummy half. This will be a penalty against Osborne. He'll get some in the sin bin almost, you'd think. He won't. He's lucky. Mario Fennick deciding whether to go for another try or to take the penalty shot, but sensibly not deciding that they've got this game parceled up even yet. He's going to take the two points. Or to attempt the penalty goal. Moves in. That looks pretty well off the boot, but it's going to go across the face of the goal mount. St George bring it back into the field of play. Yes, Darren Higgins, 41 for St George, has taken the place of Steve Robinson. And Darren Higgins, who's been captain of the St George reserve grade side for a fair portion of the season. A very lively young customer, a 5'8". George needs some thrust out there as Fafita running across field. It wasn't a good pass, but here's Johnson, cracks on the speed, up to almost the halfway line. Good tackle from Maven, his opposite number. Fullerton Smith loses the ball, but he's got it back, and he's lost it again. Referee says South can play it. Paul Roberts, it was, he got the ball. Ian Roberts takes it up now. Midway half and quarter line, Saints end of the field. This is Boyle, 12 metres out from the quarter line. Fennick, plenty of time to stand. That was well picked up then by Roberts on the first. Back to Blake, the basketball pass over the top to Maven. And Maven's got Harrington in support but can't get it away. 32 metres away from Saints line. De Jura to Harrington. Harrington, good strong run from Harrington. Very strong run. 18 metres out from Saints line. Last tackle, Coleman directing traffic, Blake, there's the kick from Blake, Warford's back there, now what's Warford going to do, can he get it back into the field of play, ankle tap, and in the end has to force the ball, touch judges coming in, they've lost the padding off the goalpost, and a line dropout will ensue. Great angle tap here by Graham Lyons. Phil Blake took a risk here, kicking out wide. He uh, was going to give Ricky Walford a chance because there were some open spaces. But look at Lyons' determination here to dive and just get a vital angle tap in, and that was enough. It's good football there from Lyons. South Sydney again with the football down around that sort South St George borderline area. They might as well have not got a seat down the northern end of the ground because all the play in the second half has been down the other end. Here's Chisholm. He seems a lot more mobile this year, doesn't he? Wayne Chisholm. Coleman. And a penalty against St George. Incorrect marking. Penalties 12-4 in favour of South Sydney. Steve Lenane saying a few words. Five minutes in the bin for commenting on the referee's decision. Look at that rain. Oh. Times like this, mate. Be glad you're up here. Here's De Jure to try and add two more points to South Sydney. It looks good. It's there. And so the first points 
of the second half have taken almost 27 minutes to come up and Souths now leads St George by 22 points to nil. The first game, in fact, uh, is a field day for Adam O'Neill from memory. St George restart play. Bronco de Jura away to long bottom. The long bottom's mistake certainly didn't cost South anything. Here's Maven. South started off the season a little quietly. They went down in the first match to East, but uh, once Wayne Chisholm and Ian Roberts got back into the side after injury problems and started to fire, well, South haven't looked back. And here's one of those men, Ian Roberts. Chisholm. Just inside South Sydney's territory. A little chip over the top. That's beautifully picked up. How did Lyons do that? This is Blake. Blake's got a heap of pace. Shut the gate. Phil Blake's in for his second try of the afternoon. But what a genius of a pickup it was to send Blake away. That was classed up. It's 26 points to nil. But have a look at the brilliant handling skills. Sheer skill by three players. First, a delicate little chip by Coleman. Just the shortest of chips. Look how low Lyons gets down here. How did he pick that ball up on the fly? And then the sheer plate pace of Blake. If anything, I thought Lyons had given uh, the ball to Blake a little bit early. And Walford almost closed in on him. But uh, in the end, Blake just too fast. Beautiful skills. Look at this kick from Coleman once more. It only travels about five metres in the air. Lyons down now. Look at the pass from Lyons. Just a little bit early there. Could have uh, gone to the fullback a little more. But in the end, Blake had the pace to uh, escape the cover defence. And there's the kick from Bronco de Jura. He's kicked it. And so South Sydney are now leading by 28 points to nil. South Sydney through Harrington. As they bring the ball back towards that halfway line. They've still got it here, uh, South Sydney. Up over the halfway line they come. Here's Blake again as he's looking for a hat trick. Well, he's looking for it. He can't get it yet. Ten metres out from the quarter line. Fennick. That looked to be a forward pass, and the referee says so. A little more basketball from South after the forward pass, but in this position, when you're winning the game 28 points to nil, 10 minutes to go. <laughs> Good bit of football, really, from, uh, from South to try and keep the ball going. But when you're in this position, winning the game easily, everybody in the team wants to get his hands on the ball and score a try. Everyone suddenly gets uh, very enthusiastic to be in the game, whereas the team on the wrong end of the scoreline, the time can't uh, go quick enough. Fafita. Fafita decides to go on his own. Up to the halfway line. Some great games of football on tomorrow. Clock stopped at the five minute mark as Ricky Walker's got that pass away. That looked to be a fraction forward as well. Fourth tackle against St George. Here's Osborne. Just outside the quarter line. Last tackle against the Dragons. Can they put a try on? A kick from Crow, it's deep, and Harrington's there, and Harrington evades the St George defence. He comes to the quarter line, good run from Ross Harrington. Yes, uh, ABC Radio tomorrow, 2 BL in Sydney will be covering the big game at Leichhardt Oval between Manly and Balmain. Warren Boland, the 4QR, and our Queensland listeners will be at Parramatta Stadium for Parramatta and Brisbane. Of course, uh, Peter Wilkins will be up at Newcastle for Newcastle and North. Of course, the other big game that will be broadcasting tomorrow for Wollongong and Canberra. Listeners, is Illawarra and Canberra. All of the action tomorrow, including some rugby union action as well, on ABC Radio from 1 o'clock. On the halfway line, South Sydney, last tackle. Coleman deciding to reef it deep. Now, coming through quickly here is Lions. They better get back there quickly, St George. And Potter does. He had a bit of help from Moore. Good work by Clinton Moore to get in front of Potter quite legally and just shepherd him as he was about to pick the ball up. Stop the tacklers charging right through onto Potter. 
So less than five minutes to go. And listen to that squelch as the players get near the sideline microphones. Fullerton Smith wasn't expecting that. Now here's a chance for South as they move it quickly out wide. Ian Roberts, quickly the ball's gone to Harrington. The St George defence has got across there. And South Sydney have really demolished St George today. 28 points to nil, and are they finished yet or not? Here's De Jura. Bronco De Jura. De Jura's almost in the clear. Long bottom. Back on the inside. This is Blake. Blake, he's going to score a hat trick. He's in Greece third. It's 32 nil. Phil Blake scores three tries in an outstanding display here this afternoon, and that really was a good try. Well, just sheer brilliance by South. They've really played well in attack and defence today, but they keep the ball alive. A long pass goes out from Blake, who eventually came around again. The Jura pushes off a poor attempt to tackle there by Billy Nagy. He really didn't drive in hard enough. The Jura slips the ball away. Longbottom realises he can't go all the way, and Blake is backed up from the far side of the field, and his reward is his third try for the match. Beautiful football. The Jura pushes away from a tackle that really should have been made. Picks up Longbottom with a good long pass. Now, Walford falls in Longbottom, but he stopped in time to get a good pass away. And Trevor Crowe, who hasn't stopped uh, trying, he couldn't make the final tackle. Blake in. Brilliant. Yes, his third try of the afternoon. He's fifth of the season. He scored in the ninth, the 68th, and now the 78th minute of the match. Great performance from Phil Blake. And as we said at the beginning of the game, strange enough, the game breakers could have a telling effect today. They weren't needed that much, but he was one man we were referring to. St George, very beaten side. They've got another game on Wednesday night, of course. They've got to play Manly in the Panasonic Cup down at Wagga. Bronco de Jura, wide. And really, it's almost, it's almost like playing at, at night here at the moment. Well, St George know that they can do a lot better than this and I'm sure they will bounce back maybe they've uh, suddenly started to read their own publicity the last couple of weeks but on the other hand it's been a comprehensive performance from South Sydney we can go right back to the beginning of the game when Ross Harrington was over the line and dropped the ball the restart from St George hard not to find a good player in the South lineup great performances from Lions Maven played well. Harrington's taken every chance he could. Blake and Coleman dominant in the middle of the field. Particularly those beautiful long cutout passes that really did turn St George around in the first half. In the forward pack, Chisholm, always dangerous, working hard. Roberts, very elusive on the edge of the ruck. Boyle, Fennec and Roberts have done their job. So has Andrews. They lost Ellison early on. And uh, they still, even with the loss of uh, a general kicker like Ellison, South have Coleman, Blake, who can take over that role and do it so well. So they have other options in the kicking department. Likewise, the goal kicking. So, good side, South. Ricky Walford getting back. I don't think Ricky Walford's too interested in taking the ball up because the referee has blown the whistle and a comprehensive demolition job here at the Sydney Football Stadium this afternoon. South Sydney has scored five tries to none. Phil Blake scored three and one each to Graham Lyons and Ross Harrington and six goals for South Sydney this afternoon. Ellison kicked two and De Jura kicked four and the score, South Sydney 32, St George nil.